Okay. I added this in. <laughs> I added this in because of part of the discussion that was going on today. But this is one other thing that comes up is that it's really not straightforward. And just because, so like I said, like I had those bees that lived for five years that didn't need treatment. One beekeeper moving into my area that didn't match, have um, bees handled, or their varroa handled, could have wiped them out. There's a lot of environmental variables in there. If you have good bees, or if your neighbor has good bees, or if that person on the internet, on the homesteader blog, never has to treat, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have absolutely superior stock and it necessarily doesn't mean that they have found the secret answer. So they may be in an area with very little pressure. If there's no vectors in there, it doesn't matter if your bees can't handle Varroa. It's the same thing like up here, we don't have to worry about Zika virus because we don't have Aedes aegypti. That mosquito can't live up here, we don't have to, to worry about spraying for it because it's just not here. When I started beekeeping in the early 90s in northern Wisconsin, there absolutely was varroa in the United States, not in the woods in northern Wisconsin where I was. It just wasn't there yet. It wasn't even on the radar there yet. So you could be, you could be having awesome success, and it's just because either your neighbors manage it really well or you don't have any bee neighbors. You could be in an area with no virus. And we've seen this as it's gone into new islands, is that they've actually had higher levels where you can have more varroa before the virus moves in. So it doesn't matter if you have all the mosquitoes in the world if you don't have malaria there. You know, it's just, it, you won't actually, it'll be annoying, but you won't actually get sick from it. We have genetically distinct populations of varroa. They're very, very different from each other. And you could have a, a version that doesn't reproduce as well or that's not as good, living in the colony. There's, we know for sure there's weakened versions of the viruses. And there's some that if you get the weak version, it actually means that you aren't gonna get the bad version afterwards. So maybe the one that's circulating in your neighborhood is the weak version, and your bees are actually just kind of inoculated towards it. Or the environment may not be conducive. That's more relevant to mosquito type things, but there may be some other, basically there may be other reasons. And the, the point of this slide is that it is, when you're looking at that one that I had with the three circles, what I didn't point out at the time is behind it all was the environment. And there's a lot of other factors going on. One of the big ones is this right here, is just having the, the pressure around you in what it is and how bad it is around you. And this is one of the things when I do just my Varroa talk, when you, when you deal with other diseases, one of the first things that you have to do is just stop transmission. Like this breeding is going on in the background, but what has to happen for it to actually succeed is that we get out of this place where we have these ridiculously high levels everywhere. Because so you have to stop this up, like we don't have to be, we can still breed for resistance and we don't have to be in the middle of this ridiculous epidemic where we've got counts of 50 and, and it's really high and colonies are collapsing. So making sure that you're going in there and managing your varroa mites is part of the whole thing of actually stopping this huge epidemic while the breeding is going on in the background. 